The year theme is Kingdom Defenders. Yes. And I want to do a short three sermon series for the night entitled When Men Cry. Mm. When Men Cry. I do believe that there is a difference when a man cries. I believe, I believe that the humbling of a nation and a nation is changed when men cry. And so we're going to visit these three biblical accounts in short order as the months go by. And um, we're going to hear how God handled when a man cried. The sermon title today is A Cry of Deliverance. A Cry of Deliverance. And the text is St. Mark 5. I want to read one verse, verse 7. Talking about when men cry. St. Mark 5. Verse 7, here beginneth the reading of God's early word. And cried with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee? <laughs> Jesus, thou son of most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Hmm. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. Amen. So we're dealing with the topic, a cry of deliverance. A cry is an indicator of pain or when one is uncomfortable with where they are at the moment. A cry is an outward evidence of something that is going on inwardly. A cry is a message meant to be moved upon. Here's the thing about a cry. If the cry is heeded and the situation attended to, there will be a shift or a change in that situation. A baby cries and the mama calms the baby down. A toddler cries and the mom cuddles him or her. A teen cries and the parent tries to caress them. A love cries and you try to cure them. A cry acts for your immediate attention. In the Bible, these scriptures speak about a cry. Psalms 18 and 6, it says this, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even to his ears. Boy, that's reassuring. Psalms 34 and 6, uh, one of my favorite. This, well, this part of the scriptures you had to learn growing back up in the church in my day. Huh? This poor man cried, Lord have mercy. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. See, but you learned that at age 7, 8, 9, 10. Lord have mercy, that make you a conqueror right there. Then we have Psalms, another Psalm, same Psalm, Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Psalms 56, 8 and 9, thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Right. Wow. Psalms 107, verse 6, all coming from Psalms. Oh, boy. Cry baby David. I wonder why he's crying. Oh, from David. Psalms 107, 6, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. See, people, people didn't know the word. When I didn't know how these were going to work out, I knew the word. The word's going to work it out. Psalms 107, 19, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Church, we can be assured that God's ear is open to a sincere cry. Let's see this as we view the text of the night and look at the following three points. <laughs> Point number one, the other side of the sea. The other side of the sea. Point number two, the other side of the situation. The other side of the situation. And point number three, ooh, the other side of the society. The other side of the society. Let's deal with it. Point number one, the other side of the sea. 
There are always two sides of the sea. This side and that side. <laughs> the two sides can look very different. And in this biblical text, they surely do. For Jesus, sweet Jewel, had just left that side on his way to the other side. Now, on that side, Jesus was teaching. On this side, Jesus would be telling. On that side, Jesus was teaching a multitude. On this side, Jesus was talking to one who had a life of solitude. On that side, Jesus taught in parables. On this side, Jesus would teach in reality. Oh, the difference a side makes. Come on now. Hmm? Verse 1, it reads, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Church, I do believe that there are times when Jesus moves away from the crowd to teach a deeper lesson in life. Let me also say that because the other side will present to you deeper insight, <laughs> that there will always be some sort of hindrance before you get to your other side. And before Jesus and the disciples reached the other side, there was a storm. Remember that? Shamano yeah. Seketa. A sudden storm. Can I tell somebody here that before your side of deliverance, before your side of healing, before your side of victory, there's always a storm in between because the enemy wants to take away your peace. But I got news for you that Jesus in the midst of the storm stands up and he speaks to the storm and he said, peace, be still. An indication that your situation that's well, not too peaceful will meet up with a savior who can say, peace, be still on the other side. And so, yeah, he said, peace be still. Why? Because Jesus was on his way to calm the storm in a man's life, and Jesus was about to, about to bring him peace. <laughs> your storm is just a preview of your victory. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? So when the, when, the, when the storm is raging, oh, my God, what kind of victory does God have in store for you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The place on the other side is called Gadarenes. <laughs> Gadarenes means reward at the end. <laughs> huh? You, you got to go through the storm. You got to experience a rocking and a, a reeling. You've got to experience being unstable. You've got to experience wondering what's going on. But if you hold on, God's going to get you to the other side. He's going to get you to your personal gatherings because God has a calm waiting for you. Don't let the storm scare you. Don't let it distract you. Don't let it stop you because Jesus is going to board your shit. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And so, <laughs> church, I need to tell you that Jesus makes it to your place called Gadarenes because you are about to be rewarded. Hmm? Uh, not at the beginning, <laughs> not in the middle, but you got to make it to the end. Huh? You got to persevere. I know these can look a certain way. <laughs> You know what I've learned to do? Look right back at it and even look through it. Lord of mercy, I don't like the way the storm looks. I don't like the way it makes me feel, but I, I just look through it, you know. I say, God, look, if I can breathe another day, if I can get up another day, if I can make it through another 24 hours, I'm, I'm one, day, one day closer to my gatherings, my reward at the end. You see, the enemy of your soul likes to discourage you discourage you so that you don't hold on to the end and so that you don't get the reward. Listen, <laughs> the enemy knows you're going to get your reward if you get to the end. He is more concerned about you getting to the end than you. He doesn't want you to receive your reward. But I got news for the devil. Come on now. I don't care what I go through. I understand that at the end, I will be rewarded. 
I said, no matter what, I'm going to hold on till my change comes because we win. I win. At the end, at the end, at the end, at the end. Lord, have mercy. Don't get discouraged in between. Mm -hmm. And so verses 2 through 5, let me read them. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately <laughs> they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, ah, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, no, we've changed, because that he had often bound with fatters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fatters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. <laughs> Man, listen, let me just say this. When those spirits get a hold of people, why you think, I'm going to go back to this morning, why you think those big, strong man police officers couldn't handle a 19-year-old and a 26? It's a spirit! Yeah. Mm. Unclean spirit. So it reads, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones, with stones. So on the other side of the sea was a man who was living a defeated life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what I like? I like that Jesus will move from the crowd <laughs> to my crowded situation to take me to a better place of living. Huh? He, he'll move from the multitude to deal with the multitude going on within me. Ain't no, nothing too hard for God. Oh, yeah. Jesus, he will move from the multitude to get to me. See, I'm important like that. Anybody else that important? Yeah. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This man's life was out of control. No other man could control him. They tried to control him by tying him up to keep him still. However, the man, the spirit, let me get it, the spirit within him, huh, what risk? See, sometimes it ain't when you hear him speak, it ain't them speaking. It's the unction of another spirit speaking. That's how you know you're dealing with spiritual warfare. When they act right out of their mind, you're like, that ain't, kid, that ain't the person I know. However, the spirit within him would respond and break loose from that which bond him. So let's look at this man. Bring me the tombs. See if we can fit it up here, balance it. If we can't, put it in front for me. Put it in front for me. On the table, I want it high and lift it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got something, I just got it when I saw Deacon move in there. Got this picture. So, we didn't get everybody in the graveyard sleeping in peace. <laughs> right? So this man living, huh, living a monster grave, but ain't got no peace. You ain't going to find no peace in the grave. You feel close, you want, let me leave that alone. I mean, I ain't going to visit nobody. I ain't going back. I, 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 in my, you know, decade, two decades ago, I'm going to accompany the mama. After that, I ain't going back to nobody's grave. I, I ain't doing it. I'll catch them in the rapture. <laughs> so let me talk about this tomb. He was living, watch this, among the remnants of their past. Everything. Ooh, good one. Everything in the graveyard was already there. Had no future on this earth. That's what I'm talking about. And so he was finding, the spirits found that he will keep him there. In other words, he fattens and he changed, don't matter. When you're in bondage to your past, when you're in bondage to dead things. They're stronger than chains. He was living amongst things he could do nothing about. What a picture. How are you going to have a future if you never let go of your past? Hmm? Now he's beginning to look like where he lives. <laughs> he is beginning to look like where he lives. Okay, this, this just came to me before I get to that. The bodies in the grave are decomposing. He now in his life is alive but decomposing. I'm going to jump ahead 
to bring you back. He's uncapped. He smiles. Because remember, at the end, they found him clubbed, sitting in his right mind. So right now, he's not clubbed. He's out of his mind. So this is the degradation and the decomposition that happens when you find yourself in a graveyard. Mm -hmm. He is beginning to look like the dead, deformed in his mind, destructive to his own body. Listen, you'll find no peace in what you cannot change. And that's what he had to realize. I'm going to look at good, happy pictures. My brain, I go to, I say, how long have they been there? Mm -hmm. That means right now the ashes. I go somewhere else. I don't need to go to a graveyard. If it's like two and three weeks, I'm like, mm hmm, make it since I don't need, I don't need to be doing that. What? Okay, I'm just, just trying to help you. What I see. You know, I, I, you know, I, I'm not stopping anybody from doing. I'm just saying how I am. I don't play well in in dead places. I don't. So, so look, look at this now. Remove that for me, uh, um, good deacon, sir. Let's let's look and see what he is doing. <laughs> You can put it back, yeah. In the graveyard. That's what he's doing in the day of place. I wonder what he's doing in the day of place. Let's see. He's cutting himself. Oh, I'm going to help somebody tonight. I'm going to help people. I don't know what type of stone it was sharpened than this. Because the Bible said he cut himself. I ain't cut myself. I'm just going across my skin. He was cutting. Got a cutter. This is no different than this. No, you don't. I ain't getting up and I <clears throat> I, I'm trying to tell somebody I need for us to understand. So we understand people. We understand people that are suicidal, that are cutting themselves, that they feel that they're in a dead place. They feel that they're in a place with no future. And the only thing that they can control is this present moment. They, they don't even know that they're taking their life. All they know is I'm taking control of this present situation. I'm tormented by something, and so I need to do something to get my mind. I feel out of control, but I'm going to control this. A cutter. As long as he has a sharp stern, he can control the tearing of his own skin, the ripping of his own flesh, the tormenting of his own mind. I'm telling you, it's a demonic spirit. If demon spirits enter you, enter your, your mind, your thinking process, you will take up something to take your life. Yeah, man, oh, she. The stern is a weapon of choice. Watch this. And they are thus learned, Lord have mercy, yes. Yes. Oh, makes a choice to get to the other side. My Lord, can you imagine Jesus? Almost like a 411 operator. I, I see somebody on the other side and if they take up another stone, if they take up another knife, if they take up a rope, if they take up a gun to their head, uh, that's going to be the end of them. But I know that there's life and that there's purpose in them, and so I, I, I can't let it happen. Let's go to the other side. Huh? And on his way to the other side. See, the enemy don't want you delivered. The enemy doesn't want you set free. And so the storm will happen. But I love me, my Jesus, the Prince of Peace. He's going to get to the other side to give you what you need. That's what we need. That's the hope in Jesus Christ. How many people in and out of church around Bermuda dabbling in suicidal things, relationships, thoughts. But look at how wonderful Jesus is. Hebrews 4 and 15, one of my favorites. For we have not an high priest, <laughs> which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, ah, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. <laughs> in other words, I know what you're going through, but I never did it. In other words, I understand what you're going through, 
but I've never walked. The only thing Jesus is is deliverance. Yeah. He's deliverance for what you're going through. Yeah. Jesus knows what this man is feeling. Not only that, Jesus knows like this man what it means to be rejected. People feel they're all alone. Matthew 21 and 42, it reads, Jesus saith unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Line it up. <laughs> this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Jesus will meet you where you are. Point number two, the other side of the situation. <laughs> so when the man sees Jesus, he watches, he sees more than Jesus. He sees the other side of his situation. He sees hope. He sees an escape from where he is. He sees peace in the midst of his storm. He sees the wholeness that is a possibility for him now. If we can just introduce them to Jesus, and if they can give themselves a break and, and get in relationship with Jesus, they'll make it. They'll make it. Look at uh, verse 6. It says this. But when he saw Jesus, now Jesus has been seeing him. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. He, he see, what? There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Didn't check in with Bermuda National Sports Club. Didn't, didn't, didn't have a timer. You didn't see it coming? My God. Can I tell somebody here, somebody listening, you may not see your deliverance coming. Somebody else may not see your deliverance coming. They, might not, they may not know that you see Jesus. But I have a feeling, church, that when it's your time for deliverance, that you get supernatural sight. And what you had never seen, you can now see afar off. I never saw my hope. I never saw dreams coming true. I never saw my future. All I had was pain. All I had was shame. All I had was disappointment. But Jesus, I see you afar off. And the man runs. He runs to the other side. No hesitation. How are you hesitating when Jesus is on his way to you? How are you hesitating when the answer is joining with you who have the problem? Lord, have mercy. Ha! The idea you must see here is that the man wanted to escape. You, you saw him, he didn't even wait for me to say, go now. He saw Jesus in the scripture and he ran because he needed, this is key, folks, from where, wherever my, Lord, have mercy, Whatever my present condition is and where this place is, I got to get from that place. You can't get stuck. You don't want a whole pile of people saying, yes, I know. I know how you feel. Yes, you're right, you know. Yes, that could have been done different. All that graveyard talk. But when you're ready, what? When you're ready and you see deliverance, you run for it. You run for it. Uh-huh. <laughs> he ran to Jesus. This man ran. He had an opportunity. He had, listen, he had one opportunity, and he was running towards it. His run indicated that he was not waiting or hesitating. He wanted to be made whole. He ran from where he was to where he wanted to be. He ran from the grave towards the, Lord have mercy, Resurrection and the life. Come on up in here. Huh? He ran from the dead place <laughs> to a man who was about to conquer death, hell, and the grave. Shaman say, well, you know, this church, is, church stuff's pretty powerful if you get in it, you know. <laughs> Make you more than a conqueror. Make you look at death, dead, and dying and say, oh, no, we shall not die, but we shall live. That's what it makes you do. Uh -huh. Seven and eight. 
and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, <laughs> Jesus, thou son of the most high? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now remember, the man's running to a, the man in his right mind's running to Jesus. But that demonic spirit in him, ah! for he, no, just Jesus, for he said unto him, I like Jesus, it's cool, you know. I don't think he was Pentecostal. <laughs> but, um, because if I would have wrote this, let me read it to you. See, I'm going to tell you how I would have wrote it. I mean, maybe it's Anglican. I ain't going to listen. No, he wouldn't have been there. Look. It says it like this. For he said unto him, it's Jesus, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now, you see how calm you are? If it was a Pentecostal, Hayaro Robo Sheketa. Come out! <laughs> I decree and declare! Come out. <laughs> oh, Sha. Hey, I felt that in my, I felt that in my spirit. What? This thing got a full stop. The Bible, you only see one explanation mark, but at this one, comes up. Bam, bam. Bam! Three explanation marks. But I like Jesus, you know. I prefer him. Because the Prince of Peace. All he have to do is speak peace. He is the word. When the word speaks, all that he has permitted to exist in his earth must obey his command. He don't have to raise an eyebrow at the enemy spirit. Are you kidding me? His blood pressure doesn't increase. His pulse rate does not double. He faces and says, what? Hmm? Mm. Let me talk to you some more. Church, understand that the man ran to Jesus, but the spirit wanted to run from Jesus. That's the struggle, you know. Yeah. That's the struggle. Why they ain't coming in, Simon? Oh, they want to. They love the church. They love how we praise and worship. But that demonic spirit has a hold of them. Yeah. We, need, we need to loose them. Loose in the name of Jesus. Be thou free. And so, the man got to Jesus. But the spirit wanted nothing to do with Jesus. Battling right there. How are you standing in front of deliverance battling? The demonic spirit is bold <laughs> as he asks Jesus in the name of God. <laughs> Some unsaved people will act like the saved, use the Bible. Try to tell you what the Bible says. I don't argue with them. I just give him the side eye. You don't know my God. You don't know my Jesus. You don't love my God. You don't love my Jesus. You have a problem with church people. How are you using my holy scriptures? How you do that? See how Jesus handles this. <laughs> Listen. Even demonic spirits know who God is and how, and how to be deep. <laughs> yeah. How to be deep. That's why you know them, watch this, by their fruits and not by what they say. You can say the right thing all day and all night. See me gonna watch it. Gonna watch it. Gonna watch how the, it unfolds day by day, week by week, month by month, year by that's what I'm gonna watch. You, you say everything you want, go right ahead, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the fruit. That's how you know. And so, because while he called on God, the demonic spirit, he or they, the legion, he or they, delighted in doing horrible things to this man. The spirit within the man said, said I adjure you. It's like when you adjourn something, you know, the case is going on and it's adjourned to the next day. It's put off. How are you putting off, Chief? 
How are you putting off Jesus? Adjure hmm. comes from the Greek word horkezo. Horkezo. And it means to force to take an oath. It means to administer an oath to. It means to charge. Hmm. Hmm. The spirit within the man, and that spirit thinks he can take charge. Standing in front of Jesus, the one that permitted you to even exist before you became a fallen angel. Don't forget, demonic spirits are fallen angels. That's why they knew God. Of course they know God. They were up there. My, my, my. When any spirit meets up with Jesus, you will soon see who is in charge. And Jesus takes command. <laughs> Many to one. Many to one. Many a legion. An army of demonic spirits in one body. Yet it only takes the voice of one to deliver. Because again, you were permitted to exist as an angel by the voice of that one in the first place. Hmm? But you know what's interesting? Just a little thought. Jesus can immediately do away with people, with things, but he needs us to learn the lesson. And so we carry on. Jesus walks in power and authority and authorizes the departure of this unclean spirit and its cohorts, the lesion. One word of command from Jesus can deliver a person who has experienced a season of torment. Huh? One word. One word. One word. That takes me to point number three. <laughs> the other side of the society. The other side of the society. Verses 12 and 13. Mm. And the devils besought him, saying, listen now, so you've got this legion. Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out, okay, and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently. Shamanosi ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. I'm going to help you out. Choked in the sea. Let's look at it, y'all. Now, church, what we must do here is look at the swine and see what happens to them in another body. What they need, look, demonic spirits... They need a living body. That's why they say, all right, if you're going to have to leave him, look, give us leave. Jesus said, all right. So now take a look at the picture, church of the living God. Take a look. Whatever, whatever demon spirits do to the swine is what they wanted to do to the man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do they do? They cause swine to run off a steep hill. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I was looking at something Jenna Maria was sharing me today. I said, Jenna, I can't look. It's, it's too steep, like three stories up. I'm like, I can't even look at a picture that high right now. But swine can cause you to run. How are you, run How are you running down a steep hill? You would rather run up a steep hill, not run down a steep hill. What else? They go overboard. How many pigs swim? So now you're going to do something that is contrary to your nature. People are going to get this at a different level. And choke themselves to death. <laughs> In other words, this is what they wanted to do to this man. Can I talk about his grace? Give me a minute. All this time while he's been in the tomb. <laughs> hey! All this time been in the graveyard, right? 
all this time being tormented, yet God still kept him to where he didn't run down the hill and he didn't jump overboard and he didn't kill himself. Come on. I'm talking about the mercy of God in spite of what you're going through. I'm telling you, God will keep you in the midst of the storm. They wanted him to run off the mountain, jump overboard, and kill himself. Bottom line is, and I am only got, I only need two, three more minutes here. Watch this. Bottom line is that Jesus delivered this man from the tormenting, very timely, suicidal spirit. Suicide is a result of a tormented spirit that has not been able to connect with the living God or with Jesus Christ. It is the devil that desires that you end your life. Yet tonight I celebrate that the kingdom is pro-life. Shaman will say, ho! Pro-life. Every time God permits a sperm and an egg to join together, that's his life. Huh? No matter how it was conceived, how it got here, could be happy about it, may not be happy about it, but that child has already been ordained by God. My God. God desires that you have life and have it in abundance. Church, we are currently living smack dab in the very middle of this biblical scene as Satan has unleashed a suicidal demon spirit over the earth. People taking, pastors taking their lives. How did they reach that place? People say, understand, we're people too. No, pastors have been called to, to be more accountable. I'm not like you. I'm accountable for your soul. I can't stand up here talking about life and how Jesus saves and Jesus um, delivers and, and Jesus brings out of such a place and they're talking about go and take my life. What? what? Do contrary. Totally oxymoron is right. People taking their lives under a demonic spirit of depression and rejection. The society is now getting like the people of this man's community. They, they would rather you stay as they know you to be rather than walk in who, who God has made you to be. That's the thing. They want you to stay, stay in the grave, stay in the grave, stay around the tomb. Yeah, yeah, oh, they like Oh, yeah, she's doing her normal thing. Yeah, she's out of her mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's doing his normal thing. Mm, that's him. Yeah, yeah, you know him. Ain't nothing good about him. But yet when the child of God sees somebody in that condition, I don't care where they are, all things are possible. I know a God who can save. I know a God who can deliver. I know a God who can change our life. Amen. We think different. Hmm. So the society... Getting just like this man's community. There are those who will, watch this, support your suicide. You may be alive and dead, you know. Or alive near death. Or what? Present but absent. Alive but no, de no purpose in, for you. Because you're wallowing around in that place. People like you. They know you're there. Yeah, yeah, she's at her normal spot. Yeah, he said his normal place. I saw him. Yeah, it's cool. I had the same. It's all right. We've normalized suicidal behavior. The society has given up on you. You must not give up on you. Jesus is making his way to the other side, and when Jesus gets there, you will be set free. Now, you and I may rejoice at the deliverance, but there will be those who cannot accept your new state of wellness. Yet the message to you is this, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great, <laughs> how great things Jesus had done for him. And all the men did. See, there's that man. Now, why did they say all the men? If all the men marvel, the women are marveling, the women are falling out under the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if the men are like, what? God, you're Oh my God, we turn back to you. The women, find them on the floor. All of them covered in cloths, they're out. 
So it's this authority situation. And so he, he tells, because the man wanted to go have Jesus. Well, I would too. He's like, they brought Jesus. I want to go with you. I, I, I like what you've done. This is awesome. Jesus said, no, no, no. I've saved you to save others. So go and publish it. That's right. That's the newspaper we need. The one that publishes the good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and he keeps, and he satisfies. That's the good news. So you got to share your testimony. Huh? You got to share where God has brought you from, where you are now. Oh, yeah. I, I was circling. I was in a dead place, but God sent his son Jesus and set me free, director. Now evangelize for the kingdom that's in you that the devil wanted to kill. The devil wants to kill the kingdom in you. He doesn't want you free because he doesn't want you to tell somebody about what God can do. But he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bounds of prison for me. Ah, I'm glory bound. My Jesus to see. Glory to God. He set me free. That's the good news. Everybody to your feet. I'm done, and I did it in an hour. Thank you, Jesus. I did it in 45 minutes, I should say. Next week, Sunday will be different. <laughs> Folks, keep the joy of the Lord. Understand that in God's word, there's every key of victory. Life is not without its challenges, but if we rest in his word, woo -hoo, you are my peace. Sing that once. Come on. I was just like, <laughs> you are my peace. Hallelujah. You are my peace. Thank you, God. And I will. Hi, Edible Shake.